Hi, welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. Today we are 3D scanning with the Thunk 3D Archer W. You may have already seen my older videos about the Fisher S 3D scanner and the Cooper M20. This time we are looking at the Archer W, which is a handheld scanner and has additional color capture. Let's first look at some of the specs. This is a handheld structured light 3D scanner and it's designed for capturing objects of around 20 centimeters up to 2 meters, depending on how you're using it. You can always go bigger, you can go smaller, but that's around it. It actually features a dual field of view mode, which means that you can focus in on smaller objects or cover a larger area, which helps tracking larger objects. In optimal scenarios, you're getting around 3 million scanning points per second and with an end resolution of around 0.25 millimeters in the mesh. Although the overall accuracy is depending on how you scan and what you're scanning, but it should be below one millimeter per meter. What this means is that you have great specs for scanning both large and small objects in this price range, while still achieving a really good accuracy. However, as with most scanners, it depends on you, the user and the object, certainly, uh, depending on how you can track them and what the actual accuracy is that you end up with. The Archer W is a projected light 3D scanner using a white light pattern projected onto your objects. Two cameras then record that pattern from their own angles and using your favorite algorithm from school, the Pythagoras theorem, which is partially responsible for creating 3D points. Then in the software you add all those 3D points together and you get a 3D point cloud, which you then mesh and you have a mesh file. The Archer W has both feature and marker scanning. This really helps on some more difficult objects, especially if they are hard to track, symmetrical, smooth, or something that where the geometry tracking can't really handle. You also have a hybrid mode where you can combine markers together with good features, which is a really handy mode to have. Before we review the scanner, let's check out what's in the box and what you get included with it. You get everything you need to scan except the computer. You get software, markers, calibration plates, turntable, which is not powered, and power cables for the scanner. I'm using my now a bit too old computer for 3D scanning, although my tracking on large scans are getting a bit slow, so bear that in mind when you're looking at my scanning data later on, that I don't have the best computer. Better RAM memory and better CPU and GPU combo is recommended. So the software is still not Thunk 3D's greatest achievement, and I'm using an unfinished release of the software. I Hopefully I can provide some good feedback and uh, updates for them. But currently, it's not really the best one and I'm not going to focus on it. But I expect something better to come along. Alright, in this latest version of the scanning software, we basically set up a new product and you have to name it to something, something random. You can then select if you want to have textures, yes or no. Target type, which is a bit tricky to like, understand what is a universal shape. Flat carving, I guess that's a really flat object. Or geometry cube, which I don't get what that is. So universal object it is. Brightness, well you can adjust this later on, but this is, um, you don't really get any feedback, so you have to watch for that feedback yourself. I'll show you in a second. Then we select what type we are using, alignment, so either features, which is the shape of the object, markers, uh, frame, which is one by one pictures, and hybrid, which uses both feature and the markers. Then we can select the scan mode fine or standard, depending on the field of view and size of the object. So let's go for a fine mode here. And then we can create our project. So next step is you see everything up here. Uh, this is to use if you want to combine scans. And uh, this is the meshing, meshing settings that we'll do later. Basically down here you will see your points, brightness, and we can adjust this brightness depending on how the object looks. So this is a real view from the camera. So if I point the scanner at something and I click scan, you can see that we're starting to get a preview. Now it's very difficult to kind of understand how well this scan is. So if you increase or lower the brightness, you can start to see or see less details. So sometimes you have to kind of work this up and down to find a good spot for the object that you're scanning. If you're happy, you stop the scanner and you click OK. And then you scan. So this is just a random item to kind of show you what we're doing. So uh, yeah, now we're featuring feature aligning on a symmetrical object. So this object is really hard to track, so I'm actually not going to do more than that because I want to show you the settings. So uh, we're probably not happy with this, but if we were, we could always start. Okay, so to show you the process, I'm going to scan a different object. So let's get started. So the next step is that we can remove unwanted data if we want. So for example, we can remove this area. 
just for fun. And then if we're happy, we continue to the next step. So in this step, we have the meshing settings. Oh, by the way, you can see all the points here. Oh, that's kind of cool. So uh, let's go for everything. Um, resolution, let's go with 0.5 millimeters. We don't need much more of the mesh. Um, yeah, we can do that now or later. It will then process and you can see a STL file. And that is the mesh done. It's a bit overexposed here on the, the screen recording. But basically we get a lot of different details. Very nice. And if we want to, we can change the resolution. We can do curvature fill. So let's do that with around, let's say 30 square centimeters. And some smoothening. And yeah, we can do some decimation as well to optimize the mesh, but uh, we don't have to do that now. So let's reprocess. Ah, there we go. And now you can see it's smoother, some holes are fixed, some are not. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, looks better. So if we're happy, we can click this icon and we get our SDL fine and the re refined version. So you get the raw and the refined and you have all the raw data if you want to process. But yeah, you have all that you need. In this stage, before you start scanning, it's important to make sure that you're actually capturing the data. Sometimes you may have some issues with brightness being too dark or too low. This is a really good time to start spraying your object down if you need to. So if you have a really dark, shiny surface, like this plastic here, you will need to spray it down with some contrast spray. I'm not sponsored by ASUB, but I really like their type of product. There are many different scanning sprays out there. As always, when scanning, you have to try to cover everything and keep the scanner focused on the object. The Archer W also, together with the Fisher S, has these laser dots that makes it easier for you to track where you are if you can't look at the computer screen while scanning. If we are happy with the scan, you just stop on the button on scanner and it's time to process. You can of course choose to continue scanning if you turn the model around, for example. You can also remove unwanted mesh with the mesh editing tools. Processing is a bit more tricky. We get a lot of different options, but hey, in the end you have a SDL file that's put here in your folder. It's not really named or saved according to the project. But it's in there and you have to find it. It's, again, the software is a bit messy. So now you know how the scanner works and how the software kind of works. But is it any good? Well, to do that, we have to scan a lot of objects. So let's uh, see some examples in use. Let's look at a few scans. So as you can see here, I'm scanning without the markers on a turntable. This is a part of a, of a washing machine. The mesh looks really good. There are some open areas that are due to uh, really, really thin geometry. So it couldn't really mesh those areas, but I still think this is a really good scan, especially with the surface being as shiny as it was and that I didn't use any marker. So it, it's quite difficult for scanner to track. You can see there are some artifacts uh, from the geometry uh, because of this small, uh, thin, dual-sided scan. But it's workable. You can use this as a reference for whatever you want. And the detail is pretty good. Next up, I wanted to use the markers to really push the scanner. So this is a pretty small part as well. Um, some, some matte, shiny plastic. So using the markers, we're really getting better resolution. We're getting better precision and therefore better resolution. I can push the meshing a bit more. These snaps are really high detail. I mean, you can reverse engineer this without any real issues. I think this looks amazing. You can even see all the small indentations from the forming uh, from the tools. That's, that's really cool. That's impressive. So next up, we're going even smaller, even more detailed. So now I'm not using any markers and this is for uh, just trying it out. How well can I make it? And uh, yeah, you can see <laughs> I can mesh this really well. I can see all the small indentations in the plastic. So we have PP, I can see when it's made. Uh, I, I think that's really nice to get these kind of details in the, in the meshing. I mean, you can always put some more settings for hole fillings and all that, but for, for the use case, we don't need it. Scanning the chassis of the uh, old Triumph in my dad's garage, that's, uh, that's difficult. I mean, even with markers, the texture, the, the surface itself is really tricky. But I think it made a good job with that uh, really shiny old black paint 
you know, like this really thick black paint. Um, again, it's not a complete scan, but depending on what you're doing, what you need the scanner for, for example, constructing a, a battery bank or a gas tank, and this is enough to see where everything is. You, you get a good representation on which surfaces you can attach points to, but it's not like a, a complete high end reverse engineering. Uh, but it's still a fantastic reference for building parts for this car. The same goes with the trunk. This is not a optimal surface, but it's a better surface to scan. And the results is very well. This is perfect for being able to mount batteries uh, as we're doing in this case. And it's really nice to be able to see all the, the volumes, all the fasteners, where every corner are and how the volumes is represented. Uh, so I'm, I'm really impressed with this. Th this is very nice for a handle scanner and uh, for just point and shoot without really setting up or doing any spraying or anything like that. So during the weeks or actually months that I've been using this scanner, it's, it's obvious for me that it's not really the best scanner for dark objects, which really no scanner is. It's very difficult to make a scanner that's good on black and dark surfaces, especially when you have a projected pattern that you have to be able to detect on that dark surface. So scanning dark works actually a bit more difficult than I expected. With the newer software, and I've gotten some updates during my testing period, I find it getting even better. It's, it's faster, it tracks better on the dark surfaces. It's still a confusing software. Again, my recommendation for anything shiny or really dark, or transparent for that matter, is some sort of scanning spray. And that's generic. You need that for almost any type of scanner. You can pay a lot for a scanner that does better on Chrome, but then you have to pay like 10, 15, 20 times as much as this. It is a bit expensive going around with these sprays, but uh, it's still worth it to get a good data. And also scanning inside this Audi, you can see on the instrument panel, for example, it's very hard to scan these mixed surfaces of both shiny and matte. Uh, you probably should spray everything down, which I didn't want to do in my car, but I want to show you how it handles impossible scenarios. So yeah, you get some data. It's enough for some applications, but it, it's not a perfect scan, but it's good enough data for a lot of things. And that's without spray. So obviously my conclusion on that is that as with any other projected light scanner, you really have to prepare the surfaces, either with spray or mat them down or not washing them. It's really important to do that, otherwise you're not going to have a great scanning ex experience. That's not at all unique for this scanner, that applies to like everyone. You can't really just point it at something random and expect it to scan well. You have to prepare the brightness, surfaces and all that. And also when scanning people, it's it works really good for busts or heads, but if you try to scan the whole body, it can become a bit more difficult. And I don't really recommend this scanner for full body scanning. Half body is okay, but especially head and bust. You can see the scanner is fast, it works. Um, we can't really get hair, but that's expected with a projection light scanner. When you project light on hair, there's really nothing to reflect back on, since the hair is so fine. Unfortunately, all of the products I did with a full body was very complicated and I can't show them. So about that texture. Um, so if we take this scan of my head, for example, you can see that the, the mesh file is actually pretty good but the texture file is not really something you want to use for professional work. I would say texture and color scanning works for references, but capturing objects, for example, for VR or uh, VFX or uh, creating digital copies of a museum objects or cultural heritage, maybe it's not that good. Maybe you want to combine photogrammetry and 3D scanning to get some good textures and you know, all that. All right, review conclusion. What the Archer W is really good at is quick, cheap-ish, handheld 3D scanning of medium to small to medium to large objects. Especially if the objects are well prepared. Both resolution and accuracy, at least what I can measure, is really impressive. The resolution is well enough for anything that I have ever done with 3D scanning, unless I'm like scanning a bolt, but I'm not doing that. As you saw in my 3D scanner review of the Thunk 3D Jewelry scanner, it's not that the level. The accuracy is actually really nice. I can't really measure the accuracy, but the resolution is really great. For anything this large, like where this scanner is designed for, you don't need more resolution. You end up with too much data to handle, and yeah, it, you get sharp details and you get detailed curvatures. That's really what you need. Uh, I will try to add some close-ups, some extra images, maybe some downloadable SDL files that you can find in the link down below. And if you have any more questions about the scanner, please let me know. Hopefully this video has kind of covered what it can do, how it looks, and if it's good enough. 
So if they update the software on par with the competition, it's going to be a really attractive scanner. But until then, it's a good hardware scanner, but the software is something you have to fight with. And a final word, if you need like professional reverse engineering services of 3D scan data, that's what I'm doing. So you can always contact me. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.